Greetings, Gemstones, Temple Page Taylor here, and welcome back to another episode of Hidden Gem. Where today I'm going to do my first hidden gem, which is going to be about a game that is very, very. I don't want to say it's dear to me, but it's a game that uh, I really enjoyed, but I wasn't really able to finish uh, growing up. So let's get right to it, guys. Here we go. As we all know, the GameCube had very few RPGs. Fire Emblem and Tales of Symphonia come to mind, as well as The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. But here's one that I like to talk about that completely flew under the radar. Baton Kaidos, Eternal Wings, and The Lost Ocean, made by Monolith Soft, came out in 2004. First thing I want to say about this game is that it is rated T for Teen. What exactly does that mean? Well, according to ESRB, or Entertainment Software Rating Board, this. The second thing I would like to mention is that this game does support progressive scan. So if you have GameCube or Wii component cables, I recommend using them. You also don't play as the main character. Callus, the main character, bonds with a guardian spirit. You, the player character. You enter your name and are now the spirit. That way there isn't any fourth wall breaking as characters will ask you questions all throughout this game. With that being said, let's get started. Story goes like this. The world is taking place on floating islands at a time when people had to evolve wings. A god named Malpercio sucked up the ocean and somehow everybody found themselves living in the sky. Here's where Callus comes in. He wakes up in a village after being knocked out, as we know of. Callus is wanting revenge on a man who killed his grandfather and feet, which you will hear a lot. Upon leaving town, he meets Shella, who ends up heading in the same forest as Callus. These two end up unleashing the first Magnus that holds his evil god by mistake. An evil empire shows up, which happens to be led by the guy Callus wants revenge on. And this man, known as Giacomo, kidnaps Shella for stealing something from them and knocks out Callus, leaving him for dead. Although lacking originality, it has great character development and a great story pacing. Liud, Savina, and Shella were very cliche characters at first. But once their backstories were revealed, I never saw them the same way throughout the rest of the game. But sadly, I only used Shella in my final party of three. There were very few, but interesting, plot twists that caught me off guard. Especially one that happened mid-game, which explains why you are a guardian spirit and not the main character. And what is said at this point is a total mindfuck. I actually woke up my wife from her sleep when I got to this part of the game. I was totally shook. And she wasn't very happy with my reaction either. Speaking about things being said, let's talk about the voice acting now. Connie from Video Gaming Hourly Live felt that the voices were terrible. The voice acting was terrible. Her words, not mine. Craig from Nine Vault Games says to do yourself a favor, shut off the voices, man, because it's pretty bad. Blossom Burr says that he felt that it was below average. Also, understanding what they were trying to do with the fact that you're not hearing people directly uh, and everything sounds tinny. Moldy West Reviews uses the example of I speak only through toilet paper. As you tell by now, as you can tell by now, quite a few people don't like the voice acting. So how do I feel about the voice acting? I like it. Especially during the opening cutscene, which I feel is the best in the game, and of course the battles. I like hearing characters call out their abilities in battle for games because, to me, at least, it adds a little extra to it. I feel like voice acting in any game gives something a little extra, even if it's bad. Especially during that major plot twist I mentioned earlier, and how they did the laughter at that point, literal goosebumps. I wasn't a fan of Liud and Mizuti's voices, but the other four, Gabari, Savina, Shella, and Callus, were decent enough for me, 
at least. For now, I'm going to stick with sound and talk about music. Motoi Sakuraba, a man I have personally never heard of, but is also known for the soundtracks for the Tales of series and Dark Souls, has created a very lovely, that's right, I said lovely, soundtrack for Baton Kaidos. One of my favorites is True Mirror. Another is Vitria Lick, A Stroke, as well as To the Garden of the Moon Butterflies and the Moonless Night. And finally, Gentle Wind is one of the most relaxing songs I've heard in a long time. One of the reasons I put so many hours into this game is because of how beautifully the music sounded. It definitely brings a great experience to the gameplay, and that's what I like to talk about right now is the gameplay. First thing I want to say about the gameplay is the combat system. You carry cards known as Magnus, a card that holds an object's Magna Essence, or Spirit, in a card so characters can easily carry things, such as weapons, armor, magic spells, and healing items. Kallus, our main character, uses a sword, so his Magnus cards for battle are swords, of course. But when you choose a sword Magnus, then Kallus will, will actually attack the enemy with his sword in hand. You do not ever buy a sword for Kallus, you purchase Sword Magnus, or receive them from any drops. That goes with all of the characters in your party. I kind of like this mechanic because it's so different from what I'm used to doing in other JRPGs. A definite breath of fresh air, as the combat isn't your traditional combat either. The cards also have numbers on them from 1 to 9. Sometimes they can have 1, 2, 3, or 4 numbers on them. And it is important because you can either play the cards in two ways. Order, which is in or out of, or prize. In order slash out of order goes like this. You get five cards being in order, say one to five, and you will get a bonus percentage in your damage or, and healing, and or healing. So if your attack is 500, you will actually get done about 610 towards your attack and or healing because of the straight one through five. You can also make pairs of three, four, five in a row for those bonuses as well. Out of order is just that, just selecting random numbers or on a, to your attack or heal, which will not give you any bonuses at all. Then there is prize, and I love this mechanic. You play certain cards that create new cards from your combination. And man, these combinations are SP combos, SP stands for special, were what really made the combat for me. I love making these SP combos. Especially the healing combos. The first healing combo I made was a healing item for 1000 HP. But when I used it in battle with other healing items and I went in order 1 through 4, I healed one of my characters for over 6000 HP. And I was nowhere near that much life when I finished the game. And I was truly surprised with a lot of them. So I hardly ever died. But usually when I did, it was because I was given a bad hand of cards, which happened a few times. You can also collect items and increase your class. A class determines how many cards that you can hold in your deck, which is 60 maximum, and increases the amount of cards in battle, which is a maximum of 9. One thing I want to mention about the battle system is that after a certain class, you get a timer on the screen that has you make quick decisions before it runs out, which can cause some anxiety if you don't pick a card in time, but also makes the battles more lively. There is also photography the only main source of income. You have to take pictures of enemies and sell them to make your money in Baton Kaidos, but you have to wait for it to develop. Another thing about the pics is that if you use light magic or dark magic before taking a picture in certain environments, it can impact the resolution of the picture. The better looking the picture, the more money you'll get, and that goes for taking pictures of party members as well. If you get a rare photo of party members, and it's a good one, you'll make bank, like $10,000. I like the fact that I had to sell pictures for money because to me, I felt like it was capturing new creatures on film. It was something different again. You didn't receive money from battles. You had to earn your money. I like the fact that you had to sell them that way. That was very cool. And it doesn't matter whether they were good or bad. When you look into your gathering section of the menu, which has over 1,022 cards altogether, if you can find them all, you can see a great image of the monster you've taken a picture of in your gathering section of the menu. As well as other Magnus that you pick up along in your journey. You also have Quest Magnus, or Blank Magnus, as the game calls them, 
These are used to fulfill side quests, to do tasks for others in the game, such as putting out a fire with some water or fetching an apple for somebody so that they can make cider and sometimes have to use them to complete one of the four major side quests in the game. One being a museum quest, another one being a collection of animals in an ice palace, uh, one being filling out a family tree for an old man before he dies, and the final one, which is filling out a constellation map in a church. Ah, the church. This is where you go to level up both your characters and your class for your deck. During battle, you accumulate experience and enter inside of these blue flowers. You don't hit your max level and then level up like you normally would. You go to the flower where you can save as well as take uh, as it takes you to the church and you speak to a priest. And with that said, experience collected, you can level up from one level or multiple levels. The most I was able to do at one time was six or seven levels, which was very awesome. There are also orange flowers that allow you to save, but you know you're about to fight a boss because they're placed right before them. A lot of people didn't like this fact that you had to backtrack all the way to a blue flower to power up so to speak, but I didn't mind it since I usually overlevel in games anyways and I never had to backtrack. Now the traversing section is an interesting one. Since you usually travel via form of an airship or a dragon you get later on, it makes you wonder why does everybody have wings in the first place if you're never able to use them outside of battle? I mean, there's no purpose. When there's a ladder, you still climb it. When there's a ledge, you cannot jump down and use your wings to save you from landing in a harmful way. I don't like why they added the wings if you cannot fly from island to island. That would have been very cool. Although I will have to say this. Um, the pacing of the game is very good. I like it. You get from point to point very quickly. The exposition isn't overly done like in other RPGs. You know what I mean by going to a story moment and then you do all this extra on the side. You go all the way back to the town. Way back where you just continued the main story again. Baton Kaidos doesn't expand its universe to where there's an overabundance of content where you'll forget what you're doing if you want to give it a break, play something else, and decide to come back and cannot get back into the story. It reminds me very much of Chrono Trigger, where they stay focused on the plot. You know, where everywhere you went in Chrono Trigger, it was all about Lavos. Every place was about Lavos. Not very many games do this, and it is well appreciated. Uh, let's see... How about we talk about the graphics now? I haven't touched on that. So let's get to it. This game has beautifully pre-rendered backgrounds that even hold up on today's modern TVs. I enjoy these drawings and I was in awe in some of the art in this game, especially with some of the animations, like actual tree leaves moving or a windstorm blowing across the screen. A hall of mirrors, which is all broken up and is very difficult to get through, but I like that. And there's even a 2D side-scrolling area in the game as well. That's pretty fucking sick. During battle, though, it turns into a 3D-based art system with your characters. Not a bad idea for that aspect, but not the best-looking models. Characters have bland expressions on their faces, even when the camera spans to them during battle phrases, for example, and I didn't really like that. Not the best in my opinion, but certainly not the worst. Wings automatically appear in your character, characters that have them, but there's no real purpose for them other than the art style. And I did like the fact that everybody except for Liud had different kinds of wings. Liud actually didn't even have any wings. Nobody in his family had wings. A lot of people, spoiler alert, in the Empire did not have wings. A lot of guards didn't have wings. So why bring everybody into the sky if not everybody is going to have wings? They look pretty good on the character, but that's pretty much all that there was about that. So there you have it. Bat and Kaidos, Eternal Wings, and Lost Ocean for the GameCube. I would give that game maybe a, a 7 out of 10, I would say. Um, it's not the best game in the world. It's not the worst, but it did have a lot of aspects in it that really kept me interested. Um, like I said, my biggest complaint is really just playing through the ending. Uh, I didn't really like that, and I didn't see the purpose of them having wings and being in the sky if there was really no reason to use them. Um, but before I go, first thing I want to show you is uh, my wife again put up some more stuff for the holidays, and 
She gave me an early uh, Christmas gift, the little Mega Man collection uh, thing right there. I love it because it's from Mega Man 1. Ironically enough, that wasn't the first Mega Man game I played. I played Mega Man 2 before I played this one. But uh, Buddy introduced me to this one, so it still has a nostalgic feeling to me. I remember having to defeat Cut Man and uh, playing against Guts Man, who actually is really my favorite one from the first uh, game, uh, believe it or not. Um, so uh, another thing I want to tell you is uh, my new shirt that she made me. Uh, it says... Uh, don't push my buttons. And I really think it's awesome that my wife is willing to support me with this channel and make things like these t-shirts for me. So again, babe, thank you very much. I appreciate all the things that you do for me. Um, maybe you can be in another video or my next video uh, and you can introduce yourself to everybody. But again, that's uh, if she wants to go, that'd be great. If not, that's cool too. But... There you go. That is my review on my very first hidden gem. Hope you guys uh, really liked watching this. And if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please hit that notification bell to see my latest videos. And as always, gemstones, stay shiny for me.